Most of us disobey God because we are afraid of what may happen. You don't realize obedience is usually costly. It is costly to obey God. But can I tell you something? It is more costly not to obey God. You will not know the blessings that you have missed. Today, what will we discuss? Very simple. What can you learn about experiencing God's best in the life of Mary and Joseph? Are you ready? Three important realities you can learn from Joseph and Mary, especially when it comes to realizing God's best. Okay, I will give you a mental outline. Number one, you must realize God's grace. So, if you want God's best from the life of Mary and Joseph, these are something I will highlight. There are many things I will discuss, but these are something I want to highlight. God's grace. You have to realize God's grace. Number two, you must respond in faith and obedience. Remember that song we sang? Trust and obey. Yep. There's no other way. You want God's best? Trust and obey. Respond. Number three, you have to rejoice in God and His Word. I want you to look at Luke chapter 1. Let's begin. God's grace. Everybody, if you don't mind, can you read with me? All right, together. One more time. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Coming in, he said to her, everybody read, Greetings, favored one. Now, when you look at your English Bible, you don't appreciate really the root word for that. The root word for favor is charis, it's grace. That's the word for grace, charis. The Lord is with you. Grace is so amazing. It is God with us. It's unmerited favor. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation is this. The angel said to her, everybody read. Do not be afraid. Mary, literally, the name is Miriam. In Hebrew, Mariam. Now English, Mary, for you have found favor, caris, with God. The first thing you need to understand is you must realize God's best is anchored on His grace. It is something undeserving. Do you want to know how that word grace is used in the Bible? I want to comfort you to realize grace is not given to just a few. It is God's heart to give you His best. What do I mean? Let's look at how that word grace is used in the Bible. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. Let's read together. For by grace, charis, you have been saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Notice, even grace is a gift. Not as a result of works that no one may boast. Faith, grace, they all go together. It's a gift from God. Salvation is God's gift. Have you experienced God's grace? Can I tell you how that word is used? Grace? I will show you another verse. Look at how that word is used. Titus chapter 2. Together, together. For the grace, charis, of God. Grace comes from God. Has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Notice this grace refers to Jesus. God's best is Jesus. But how is that word used? It will teach you how to live. Instructing us to deny ungodliness, to say no to sin, and worldly desires. Do you realize your desire has to be changed by God? I cannot change my own desire. I can try, I can try but I need God's grace. The earlier you discover that today, the more you will go into your knees and pray, Lord, 
changed my heart. Luke chapter 131. Behold. Now, God is now telling Mary what's going to happen. Eight things. Eight things. God told Mary what's going to happen. Number one, you will conceive in your womb. Number two, you will bear a son. Number three, you shall call him Jesus. By the way, Jesus means what? Yahweh is my Savior. God is my Savior. You will call him Jesus. He is your Savior. Next, he will be great. Next, he will be called the Son of the Most High. The word the Most High is a reference to God. In the Chinese language, if you see ancient Chinese literature, they refer to God as Sang Ti, the highest, the most high. Nobody is higher than God. That's what the Bible is saying. He will be son of the most high. Next, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father. In other words, he will be a king. He will sit on the throne of his father. These are all prophetic. Next, he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. This king is going to be unique. Look at history. Look at all dictators. They come, they go. They come, they go. One of the most powerful dictators in the world, Kublai Khan, Genghis Khan. They come, they go. But this king is different forever. And lastly, his kingdom will have no end. This is all prophetic. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 tells us. Everybody read together. A child will be born to us. A son will be given. The government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will look at that name. Huh. Wonderful counselor. Meaning super IQ. Wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Eternal Father. Prince of Peace. Jesus is not just a man. He is God who became a man. That is important for you to know. Everybody read. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Now, when Mary heard this, can you tell me what went through her mind? Well, let's find out. I appreciate Mary. Scholars tell us by this time she was probably around 14 to 16 years old. Here was a teenager. Given the most amazing revelation. And look at what she said. Everybody read. Mary said to the angel, Everybody, how can this be? Since I am a virgin. Literally, in your Greek Bible, it says, I have not known a man. I have not known a man. That's the meaning of, I'm a virgin. How can that be? So how will you answer that question? How can a virgin get pregnant? Can you, do you want to know the answer? I'm so glad. Luke is the author. Luke is a doctor. So he knows medicine. He knows science. But the answer is amazingly simple. The angel answered and said to her, everybody read, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High, God the Father, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That word overshadow means you'll be surrounded and God. God is going to do it. Wow. It's all supernatural. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. Wow. And then, God knows what Mary was thinking. You see, God always affirms our faith. He helps you to believe if you're sincere. And here is the confirmation. God told Mary, Behold, even your relative Elizabeth, her cousin, has also conceived and a, son, and a son in her old age. You see, Elizabeth was old already. Impossible to conceive. 
Not only that, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. In other words, something impossible already happened to your cousin. You know, Mary, when she heard about her cousin, ah, if God can do that to my cousin, God can do it to me. But the angel did not stop there. The angel said, everybody read. This should be your memory verse. Okay? Today, read. For nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, do you believe that nothing is impossible with God? Louder. Guys, you want God's best for you? All right. You got to respond. You got to respond in faith and obedience. Look at what Mary did. After knowing nothing is impossible with God, everybody read now. Behold, the bond slave of the Lord. Mary is now saying, I am a doulos. The word bond slave is not ordinary servant. It's a bad translation when you have the word servant. It is literally a bond slave. I am a slave. A slave has no free time. A slave has no break. A slave is completely owned by the master. And that's what Mary is saying. I am the slave. I'm the slave of the Lord. Therefore, everybody read, therefore, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. What was the angel doing? The angel God is giving Mary a chance to respond. You see, God wants to do supernatural things in your life and my life. In this case, God did not force his will upon Mary. Mary said, Okay, be done to me. What about you? Do you know what God wants you to do? See, many times we don't. We don't respond to God. We want it our way. Do you know for Mary to say yes to God, what is she saying? I don't mind if I lose my life. I don't mind if I'm ridiculed. I don't mind if I'm humiliated. And I do not mind. Should Joseph divorce me? I do not mind when I'll be embarrassed for the rest of my life. I do not mind if I'm rejected by society and I'll be, be a poor person. You know why? Why did she say yes? You must respond in faith. And to respond in faith is to obey. You know, to believe and not to obey is not yet to believe. Say that with me. To believe and not to obey is not yet to believe. You cannot say you believe and you don't obey. You see, obedience and faith, they go together. So look at your life. Are you responding in faith and obedience? Everybody read now. Why it is so important to respond in faith? Everybody together. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe. God is. Nothing is impossible with him, but he is a rewarder to those who seek him. Do you know why people don't seek after God? Why you don't have a hunger for God? Because you have been brainwashed, lied to by Satan. That God is really not after your happiness. That's why most people don't seek after God. That's why you don't obey Him. Ask yourself, what is it that God wants you to do and you know it and you are not obeying it? Like paying taxes, living a holy life, asking for forgiveness. What is it? Let me tell you, at the end, your unbelief. Obedience brings blessings. Blessing to yourself, blessing to your children, blessing to your family, and blessing to the people around you. Disobedience, believe it or not, brings curse. You will be cursed, your children will be affected, the people around you will be affected. That's why the Bible tells us, choose you today. You want blessing or curse? What do you want? Louder. Well, how do you do it? Realize it's the grace of God. Humble yourself. Number two, you must respond in faith and obedience. Look at Mary. You know, I really appreciate this young girl. 
At this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth, her cousin. Why? She wanted to be confirmed that what he said is true. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. By the way, that's why I'm never in favor of abortion. I'm never in favor of killing the baby. You know why? A baby, there is life. In this case, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Read the next verse. She cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you, women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How is it happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, everyone read, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Huh, six months old baby can hear. Amazing. I don't know how to explain that. Read. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. In other words, you are blessed if you believe what God is saying. Amen? Praise God. Do you believe in God's promises to you? You better, because God will never lie. And you know what happened? Do you recall when Jesus was preaching and people said, Blessed is the breast that nurtured you. What did Jesus say? Uh -uh. Jesus said, Blessed is everyone who hears my word and obey. You want to be blessed? All right. Hear and obey. Now read. Because of this, look at Mary. Rejoice in God and His word. You know what? You want God's best? You will end up, if you trust and obey, you end up rejoicing. Let's read this together. Mary said, now this is the famous Magnificat. Have you heard of that term, Magnificat? That's from the Latin word, magnify. Here, Mary is worshiping God. Here, Mary is praising God, rejoicing in God. Let's look at her theology. Many people don't realize a young girl like Mary, 14, 16 years old, can know the Bible. Everything she's saying is a quotation from the Old Testament. Mary knew the Bible. Look at the song of Mary. Look at her poem. Amazing. My soul exalts the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Notice the object of her joy. God, God. It's internal. Rejoicing in God, the worship of God is from the heart. Wow. He has regard for the humble state of his bond slave. You see, when you learn from Scripture, when you learn about God, you learn to see yourself. Mary saw herself. I'm a slave. Not proud. You learn to see yourself. Most of us do not know who we really are in the eyes of God. Full of pride. We are so entitled. Not Mary. Everybody read. I love this. Behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. She is now applying God's word in the Old Testament to her life. These are all future tense, but it's written in past tense. Huh. It's called predictive prophecy. Read the next verse. It is so sure that the future events is now considered past tense. She interchanged the past and the present and the future. But it's all from the Bible. I love this verse. Look at her song. Look at her theology. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Personalized. Have you experienced God's mighty deeds in your life? Louder. Those of you who have not, it's hard for you really to worship God, to be rejoicing. Because you have not encountered the Lord. And let me tell you why you have not encountered the Lord. Because you have been compromising all your life. You don't give God a chance to prove himself real in your life. You must be willing to obey God no matter what the consequences is. And then you ask God, Lord, suicide it all. I remember a family. When the son took over the business, he told the father, we're going to pay taxes. And the father said, huh? We will go bankrupt. The father told me. I said, what happened? 
Well, the sun kept paying taxes by the grace of God. This company is top, inside the top 10 in the Philippines. But because the son was willing to walk by faith and trust God by doing right and leave the consequences to God. You see, God's best may not happen immediately, but sooner or later it will happen. Look at what Mary said. God has done great things for, louder, for who? Louder. The mighty one has done great things for, oh, what about you guys? You see, God wants a personal relationship with you. His mercy, look at the description of God, okay? For number one, Mary understood God to be mighty. Number two, holy. And number three, merciful. His mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear Him. He has done mighty deeds with His arms. He has scattered those who were proud in the thoughts of their heart. Continue reading. He has brought down rulers from the thrones. He has exalted those who are humble. Notice, these are still past but future tense. When Jesus comes again, he will reverse the order of society. He will be shocked. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant. Future tense. In remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary is claiming God's promise to Abraham, what he will do someday. Can you see the secret of God's best? You must rejoice in God, who he is, what he has done, and what he will do for you. Friends, if you are sad, you are having problems, I ask you to readjust your mind. You now focus on God, his word, who he is, what he has done for you, and what he will do for you in the future. And that, my friend, gives me tremendous joy. Because God's best is not always now. Mary and Joseph did not fully understand what's going to happen. But can I tell you something? Later on in their lives, they realized, oh, wow, the privilege of becoming the instrument where God will come on this earth. And would you believe it? They have no idea what their lives will do to you and to me. You know, God's best is amazing. I want you to help to read the quotation from W. Tozer. Salvation apart from the obedience. Everybody read. Together. Salvation apart from obedience is unknown in the sacred scriptures. Apart from obedience, there can be no salvation. For salvation without obedience is a self-contradictory impossibility. Why am I preaching this? Because I've seen many churches today all over the world, they preach shallow Christianity, assuring people of salvation without a real encounter with Jesus. And my job is to make sure that I teach you properly and I don't deceive you into thinking you are going to heaven, but you are not. You see, grace is never by works, but grace will always involve works. So when you refuse to obey God, example, God asks you to forgive somebody. Like what I'm trying to do with this leader. I'm making them talk to each other. Many times it's really hard. You don't want to talk to each other. But can I tell you why these leaders will talk to each other? Because they know Jesus. Friends, you need to learn to obey. If not, you won't experience God's best. What happened to Joseph? Let's read. The birth of Jesus was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, engaged, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Remember that story? In other words, they were engaged already, and then when Mary went to visit that place, remember? God appeared to Mary, got her permission. Remember, Mary said, be done to me. God could have forced his way, but God gave Mary a chance to say yes to him. Now, people ask me, what if Mary said no? Oh, how will you answer that? Well, one thing I'm sure of, God's purpose will be accomplished. 
It may not be Mary. It may be another person. But God's purpose will be accomplished. So what will happen if Mary did not say yes? In Tagalog, I won't go. What the Bible is not clear, we leave it at that. But one thing I'm sure, God is always waiting for you to say yes to him. And this is what happened. Look at the consequences. My goodness. Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away discreetly. You know, secretly. You know, I admire Joseph because Joseph is a product of God's grace. To be righteous, you need God's grace. To act in graciousness, you need grace. Joseph was gracious. You know, many times you want to do God's will. May I suggest do the right thing, but also the right way. Don't do the right thing the wrong way. Joseph wanted to do the right thing the right way. She did not want to embarrass Mary. She, he could have announced to the whole world, Mary, this girl, immoral, unfaithful. I am divorcing her. No, he wanted it secretly. But when he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, number one. Number two, you shall call his name Jesus. Joseph had no choice. The son called his name Jesus. What else? He will save his people from their sins. Even the mission of Jesus was given to the Father. This is his job description. He will be a savior. You see, you want God's best? Trust and obey. What did Joseph do? Read the next verse. Now, the angel mentioned biblical prophecy and the author, Matthew, wrote the following. Everybody read. All this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. You see, Christmas was not invented by man. Long ago, God thought of Christmas already. Behold, the virgin shall be with child, shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us, God's best. Isaiah chapter 7. This is a repetition of the Old Testament. Everybody read this together. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Christmas is God's best. God wants what's best for you in your life. Like Mary and Joseph, did you know for them to experience God's best for their life, they need to know the grace of God. They need to also realize not only God's grace, they must respond in faith and obedience. Their focus is God. What did Joseph do? As we finish, let's read. Joseph awoke from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son. Notice, kept her a virgin. In other words, when they got married together, Joseph did not have sex with her until, you look at the grammar, until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Did you know that Jesus had brothers and sisters? Let me show you. Matthew himself wrote the following. You see, this is the problem. When Jesus came to his hometown and teach them in their synagogue, they were astonished. Where did this man get his wisdom and these miraculous powers? Now, look at their conclusion. Look at their problem. Is this not the carpenter's son? son of Joseph. Is not his mother called Mary. And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, Jude, and his sisters, are they not with us? Where then did this man get all these things? They took offense of Jesus. So my friend, Jesus became a man 2,000 years ago. But before he became a man, he has always been God. Understand? 
The virgin birth is crucial because it is to prove to us that Jesus was no ordinary man. That's why in John chapter 1, verse 1, everybody read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. Apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Who is the Word? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who is the Word? How do you know? Well, look at verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus, God, has always existed in time eternity. But Jesus the man took place 2,000 years ago. And what's so amazing was Joseph is always obeying God. If you read the story of Joseph, God always appears to Joseph, and Joseph is the one who is obeying. For example, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Get out of this place. Herod will kill. Go to Egypt. Joseph obeyed. Matthew chapter 2, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Now Herod is dead. Go back from Egypt. Go back to Israel. Joseph obeyed. Then when he went to Israel, the angel said, ah, don't stay here. Stay in Nazareth. And Joseph did. What can you learn about Joseph? Joseph was the leader of the family, and he obeyed God step by step. Look at this quotation, everybody. God commands are designed to guide you to life's very best. You will not obey him if you do not believe him and trust him. You cannot believe him if you do not love him. And you cannot love him unless you know him. My friends, God loves you. He wants what's best for you. Have you surrendered your life? Like Mary. Mary said, I'm your slave. Do to me whatever you want. Have you done that? Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Just like Mary, I will completely trust you. I am your bond slave. Do to me however you want it, whenever you want it. Lord, here I am. Give me the faith to trust you. Give me the faith to obey you. Lord Jesus, I pray for these men and women who have raised their hands. Make yourself real in their lives. And Lord, help us to anticipate your best. Your best may not be now, it may be future, but whatever it is, remind us, Lord, we trust you, you are faithful, and you will accomplish your purpose in my life as we surrender, as we walk with you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.